Top of the day to the enthusiasts. I am SkyGuyR12 Turn, and I've had a request to rank all the roller coasters at Six Flags Great Adventure in Jackson, New Jersey, United States. Like my last ranking video, this is a park that has one of the best collections of roller coasters in the entire world. And on my most recent visit, vlog coming about that soon though, I recorded it way long ago, I completed their coaster collection. Before I begin this ranking, I'd be really happy if you can subscribe to the channel. You have no idea how hard I work on my videos, and my ultimate goal on YouTube is to reach 100,000 subscribers. So it really makes my content worth it if you hit that subscribe button. However, not only that, but I feel a little competitive, guys. Beyond the Thrill subscriber count is really catching up to mine. If all this doesn't make you want to subscribe, then I don't know what does. Now without further ado, let's get started. Standing down at last place is my second least favorite coaster, that's for thrills, that I've ridden, Green Lantern. This shouldn't come to a surprise for anyone. Man, do I hate this ride. Green Lantern is a coaster where you're supposed to stand up while riding it, but normally, this comes with abnormal pain on your legs and feet due to the forces. I've ridden another b and stand-up coaster in Georgia Scorcher at Six Flags Over Georgia, and I thought it was good. Maybe I was just in the right stand-up position on that coaster, but Green Lantern just sucked. It had a dull layout with forces that made the numbness go up to my legs. Not only that, but I got quite headbanging on it. But here's another flaw I have with this ride that at least 95% of coaster enthusiasts aren't talking about. The theming. Green Lantern is probably my least favorite DC superhero because he got a movie that aired in 2011 that I heard was awful. Not to mention he didn't do anything cool in the Lego Movie series. This opened at Six Flags Great Adventure the same year that movie debuted, and somehow, that pretty much dreads me. Now, will I give Green Lantern a second chance next time I'm at Six Flags Great Adventure? Yes. But for now, it stands here at the bottom of the list. Number 13 is the most overrated roller coaster I've ever ridden, Joker, the park's SNS 40 free spin. SNS 40 free spins are a coaster model where coaster enthusiasts' opinions vary. Sometimes, they get a ride they don't flip so often but other times, they get a crazy ride. On Joker, I got the ladder, which I really dislike because of how much flipping there is. Now before you go out and say, What? But Sky Guy, is it more inversions a good thing when it comes to roller coasters? Not in my opinion. In fact, I don't want inversions on a roller coaster. And that's why I hate the model in general, and they're the most overrated in my opinion. Mark my words, no inversions, no problem. Okay, credit goes to Theme Park Crazy for that quote, but I should give him credit because I don't want to get sued. Still staying on the topic of bad coasters at this park is Lil Devil Coaster at number 12. Yes, I like this more than Green Lantern and Joker, but why? Well, I would rather ride a kiddie coaster than a coaster that causes pain or flips me too many times. However, this kiddie coaster is nowhere near one of my favorites. When I rode, it had this transition on the last turn to the station, and trust me, I felt the pain on that. Even worse, I rode this two laps a ride cycle, so I had to deal with it twice. Granted, I can see what the park named and themed this after Jersey Devil Coaster, because even for a little boy, this devil is not nice. Moving on. Taking a shot in the dark at number 11 is the Dark Knight Coaster, the park's only indoor coaster. Now this may make you raise eyebrows, but I can explain. Remember what I said about my opinion on Green Lantern in general? Well, I don't like Batman either. And because there's so much theming on here, my verdict is that this theming takes points off on this coaster. 
like another coaster with the same theming in this park. Well, anyways, as I recall, this is the worst mock wild mouse that I've done so far. But now, we made it to the top 10. And number 10 is my first new for 2021 roller coaster credit, Harley Quinn Crazy Train. Bruh. What? I know. A few of you may be scratching your heads why I like this more than the Dark Knight coaster. I'll tell you why. Unlike the Dark Knight coaster, Harley Quinn Crazy Train has a theme that I like, so it has an advantage. And when I was a little kid, I was into very long trains. Fast forward to when I become a roller coaster enthusiast, and I think that long trains on roller coasters are underrated. Like, guys, why would you call long coaster trains obnoxious? What's obnoxious about them? If you can comment down below and answer to those questions, I appreciate you. And like I said, this was my first new for 2021 roller coaster credit, so you know how much that means to me. Now that you know why I like Harley Quinn Crazy Train more than the Dark Knight Coaster, let's switch back to the Batman theme with number 9, Batman the Ride. Are you freaking kidding me? I know. I know. Just let me explain, please. Okay, how many times do I have to say let me explain in one video? What the- Remember, I said that I don't like Batman. Batman is one of my least favorite DC superheroes, and I've hinted to this before, but I never said it in this video, so I'll say it. Theming can make or break a ride. If it's a theming that I like or I'm okay with, the ride gains points, but if it has theming that I'm not okay with, the ride takes points off. Batman the Ride falls into the ladder, so that's already a bad start, but it wasn't even that that bothered me. This was my first b and invert, but it's my least favorite one. The ride experience started going wrong when we were going through that 0G roll. Somehow, I got headbanging there, but the two corkscrews delivered the same. Though it wasn't as painful as the aforementioned 0G roll, I was very surprised. b and inverts are known as forceful and butter smooth ride experiences, but Batman the Ride gave me something different not in a good way. To end the story, the two Batman the Ride clubs I've ridden are pretty overrated. Now, let's head to the other side of the park for number 8, Runaway Mine Train, the park's first ever roller coaster. This is my favorite Aero Mine Train so far. Sure, it may be janky like pretty much every Aero Mine Train, but Runaway Mine Train has redeeming qualities. Like, you can't talk about Runaway Mine Train without mentioning its surprising ejector airtime hill into the lake. Holy crap! That's stronger than any airtime moment on Nitro and one of the strongest airtime moments in the entire park. Runaway Mine Train has a great setting too. You're hidden because of the trees and then you have that picturesque turn over the lake. And here's a funny story. This was one of my dad's first roller coasters and he liked it. But when he rode again on our 2021 visit, his opinion drastically changed to the opposite. It's interesting that you've had a similar opinion to someone at the moment they've changed their mind about it, right? Now, I'd argue that number 7 is the most controversial pick in this ranking, and that would go to Skull Mountain. I crap you not. Can you name a single coaster enthusiast who talks good about this ride? Whenever coaster enthusiasts talk about Skull Mountain, it's about trashing the lack of theming inside the facade, but I didn't find that to ruin the ride. In my opinion, Skull Mountain is underrated and let me explain. Oh my freaking god, do I need to count for those three words? Like I said, theming can make or break a ride, and Skull Mountain's theming is its own theming, so that's already a good start for this coaster. The waterfall and sculpture of that skull look like eye candy to those families who grew with Disney slash Universal parks. And I guarantee you, that's the kind Skull Mountain is for. But another thing I guarantee you is that the best road to ride Skull Mountain is the back. And I repeat, the back. And there's one particular reason why. The first drop. 
Holy freaking crap. This caught me off guard when I wrote it, and I couldn't believe it. I got ejected out of my seat the whole way down. And although there's nothing else that's exciting about the ride, Skull Mountain needs more respect, recognition, and most of all, more rides from coaster enthusiasts in the back row. From escaping the cave by flight, number 6 is Superman Ultimate Flight, the park's B&M flyer. Unlike Green Lantern and Batman, Superman is an amazing superhero in my opinion, and building Superman-themed roller coasters is at least normally a check. Superman Ultimate Flight is no different. Some may give crap to this ride because its only good element is the pretzel loop. I've ridden the one at Six Flags over Georgia, but don't sleep on the one at Six Flags Great Adventure, guys. When I experienced that pretzel loop, I was so close to graying out there. And the other elements? Well, I say they're there to mimic the feeling of flying like Superman himself. So I don't think it's that big of a deal like you guys are making it out to be. Do I think it's underrated? No. But I think both Great Adventures and Great Americas should be ranked a whole lot closer to, to over Georgia's. My favorite roller coaster besides the big four at this park at number five is Medusa. They're being a floorless. I got to ride in the front row when it was Bizarro, which is the theme I prefer. But then, Six Flags Great Adventure repainted it to Medusa, which if you didn't know, was the world's first B&M Floorless. It had the same name and a similar color scheme when it opened until it closed in 2008 to be rethemed to Bizarro, one of Superman's arch nemesis. I'm not very sad about it. When I returned to Six Flags Great Adventure, I rewrote it in the back row and it was a better ride experience. It felt faster and more forceful. At the time of this video's recording, this is my favorite B&M Floorless, and so far, I've done four. Alright, we're here at that number, and taking that spot is King Ka, the world's second tallest and third fastest roller coaster. On my 2021 visit, this was the only coaster I skipped out on because it intimidated me, and that was a big mistake. Now, Little Devil Coaster wasn't announced back then. It was very high on my bucket list coaster for this year, and in June, I returned, saw, and rode it. On my two rides, both were in the front row, which is the de facto role on this coaster. Holy sh**. I don't think I've ever needed to scream bigger on a roller coaster, ever. It's by far the most extreme roller coaster I've ever ridden, and it's one of the biggest must-dos when you visit Six Flags Great Adventure. Now, that may sound like I'm treating it like it's one of my favorite roller coasters, but it isn't. And that's because it's a one-trick pony. And mark my words, ladies and gentlemen, one-trick ponies are never top 200 worldwide worthy coasters, aka standout coasters. I mean, Kingdom Come may be a one-trick pony, but I'm confident to say it's one of the best one-trick ponies in the entire world. And now we're in the top three, and number three is Jersey Devil Coaster, the park's new for 2021 flagship attraction. I'm pretty sure when this coaster was announced, we expected it to be as good and fast as those RMC Raptors. But I think most of us were disappointed, including me. But I wasn't very disappointed with Jersey Devil Coaster. This was my first RMC, which might be the reason why. Another funny story. When I returned to the park, I knew exactly where to sit, which was the back. And I rode Jersey Devil Coaster again, but somehow, I got lucky enough to be assigned the front row. Yeah, sorry not sorry, but this coaster has assigned seating. I did try to get another ride on it, but then the coaster entered a temporary delay. So I decided to scratch that and ride Nitro, which spoiler alert, it will be up next on the list. I will hands down give it another try next time I go to the park, but enough wasting time. Let's talk about the underrated Nitro, my second favorite coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. 
When I wrote this for the first time, I got airtime on its first drop, drop off the mid course, and all of its airtime hills. After that, it became my all time favorite BM, which held that title for 10 months. I wrote it in the back row, which I think is where it's at. When I returned, I gave it two more rides in the back row as always, but my rides were a few hundredths of a I only got strong to weak floater airtime, but I grayed out on its helix, which saved itself from being beat by Jersey Devil Coaster. In conclusion, Nitro needs more love in the coaster community. If you think you got a bad ride on it, you should give it another chance and ride it in the back, like I said. Alright, we made it to number one, and to no surprise at all, it's El Toro. Six Flags Great Adventures only wooden coaster. El Toro is filled to the brim with huge ejector airtime on its first drop, Camelbacks, and especially that Rolling Thunder Hill. I love all of those so freaking much. I believe the first drop is one of the best drops and Ro Rolling Thunder Hill is one of the strongest airtime moments of any coaster in the entire world. However, this might trigger you. I rank this coaster more than most people do because of how rough it is. At the time of this video's recording, I've ridden El Toro six times, and five of them are from the back row. Not the second to back, the very back row. The other time, one time I've ridden El Toro was in the front with my enthusiastic friend, Sophia. But I was pretty sure that the back car, back row, was the way to go. And every ride I had on it, except the front, was pretty rough. The more I rode it, the more rough it became. And I had no idea what was up until after my most recent visit to Six Flags Great Adventure was over. When I shared my opinion, Alec Vip commented down telling me to ride it in the second to back because the very back row is a wheel seat. So if there's one thing I can do when I revisit Six Flags Great Adventure, it's to re-ride El Toro in the recommended row so I can get the best experience. Unfortunately, I can't do it right now, and neither can everyone else, because about a week ago, El Toro just suffered through an accident. I have a short about that, and I strongly encourage you to check it out. It will be in the card above. But if you want to book a ticket to Six Flags Great Adventure to ride El Toro, don't do it right now. And remember, only time will tell when El Toro will come back to operation or get removed. There you have it, my ranking of every roller coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. How do you rank every coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure? I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Again, if you enjoyed this video, it would mean the world to me if you can give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you can never miss a video from yours truly. This channel has an ultimate goal, which is 100,000 subscribers. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram, where you can follow me, and Roblox, where you can friend slash follow me, and have the rare chance of playing a Roblox game with me. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.